What's going on? This is Fred Kennedy, the voice of Ripper from Total Drama Island, and you are watching Du Bois Podcast, and this podcast is bum inferno hot! Ripper! There's only two things that make a man look weak. Caring about other people and eating mild chicken wings. I don't care about anyone, and I always order my wings bum inferno hot. Wait! Steamboat, two steamboats, three steamboat. Steam Why are you counting? Five, what happens at ten? Six, Should we take cover? Ah, crud nuggets. I had a good feeling about that one. And welcome back to our episode of Voice Podcast. My guest today is a voice actor, comic book writer, and podcast and radio host. You may recognize him as the host of Fred at Night on, Tel- on Teletoon. Her voice is Albert Einstein in Super Science Friends and as Ripper in the new Total Drama seasons. He's also a comic book writer at True Patriot Presents, The Fourth Planet, and Dead Romans. He's also the podcast host and creator of the Star Wars fan creative project audio drama, Mud, Mud 79, and many more. So welcome the gifted legend that is Mr. Fearless Fred Kennedy. Welcome. Fred. Gifted legend. I love that. I love that. <laughs> so welcome, Fred. Like, how have you been? How's Fred doing? Fred's good, man. I'm good. Life is good. It's a little bit chilly here in uh, Toronto today. It got really cold, but everything else is good. Life is awesome, man. Nice. Nice. I don't know if you, like, for us, like I'm in Chicago. I don't know if I told you that. I'm, I'm no, no, no. Chicago. I would, mm-hmm. I've been to C2E2 before. I've been to the comic convention there years ago. Years ago when I was doing a comic book called Teuton with my friend Adam Gorham. Uh, we did this uh, sword and sorcery historical fantasy story set during the Northern Crusades in Lithuania with like gods and knights and all that stuff. It was pretty cool. We sold, we, we, we did okay at the Chicago show. I think we brought too many books, but we did all right. Yeah, I come back here to see 2 e 2 then. What the, yeah, what? if I ever get to go again, I'll make sure you're aware. Hell yeah, I, I could bring some, like, get into, like, some Ripper stuff, get some comic books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, wow. Yeah, because I've been based in Chicago, and also, when I talk about sports with you later on in the interview, I'm actually not a Hawks fan, so it'll shock you who my favorite team is, by the way. If, <laughs> if it's the Oilers, that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's good, though. You've been doing good, like, and if you're curious, it's been, like, snowing here in Chicago. I don't know if you knew that. No, well, the, the weather that was there with that snow, that cold front is actually moved in this direction. So that's what like got rid of all of our really nice weather. So it got to you guys, then it came to us. So thank you for the cold weather. We really appreciate it. It's been very kind. It's weird, <laughs> like you're in the States and I'm telling you it's cold because of you. Normally, it's us making you guys cold. That's, that's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. <laughs> now, Fred, what made you want to become a voice actor, comic book writer, and who do you say is your biggest inspiration? Um, well, there are all kind of like different things. Um, the voice thing, we'll start with that because like you're a, a big Total Drama fan, so I think that's the the, the natural way to start things. And my first little like dally in, into. Uh, voice acting is because my day job is on the radio. I work on the radio as a day job. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I was working in Edmonton, that's where BioWare Studios are. BioWare, the video game company that does like Mass Effect and Dragon Age and all that stuff. Ooh. And one of my friends, uh, Vance, if you look on the credits of Mass Effect, Vance was like the lead sound designer on those games. And he, uh, his, his wife, Jocelyn, trained me on the radio at my very first radio gig in Nova Scotia. And it was just really serendipitous. She moved out to Edmonton. He moved out to Edmonton to work at Bioware. I went in just to hang out with them one day and they just asked if I wanted to do like some like group loop stuff. And it was only because I was there. And then I did more voice stuff for, for Bioware uh, including some st- like stuff for Dragon Age. Before Dragon Age was even out, I did a bunch of voice work for Dragon Age. And then they used also some of the voice work that I'd done for Dragon Age on Dragon Age 2. And they used a bunch of stuff that I did in Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2. In fact, in Mass Effect 2, you can push me out the window. Um, there's a scene in the game. And that was like really the first voice acting I did. And when I moved to Toronto, there's a lot more freelance voice work. And I did... A lot of stuff for Bakugan. 
Uh, but I didn't do the show. I was never on the show. I just did the toy commercials. So I did all of the Bakugan toy commercials for years. Bakugan, Gun Daily, and Invaders. That, that was like the, the voice that I did. That was it right there. So I did that for years. That was my biggest voice gig of my whole career until I did Total Drama Island. Because uh, that, that, those commercials ran for a long time. And I was the steady voice guy for the Bakugan toy commercials for years. And it was a great gig. It was the best gig. Um, and what was wild is there was one time when I was going in to do the voice work. Uh, mm -hmm. I, do you remember like Simply Juice? It was like this juice. It was like orange juice that was out like 10 years ago. But the commercials used Donald Sutherland as the voice. And one day I was going into the studio to do my commercials and Donald Sutherland was there. And it was so cool. And uh, he was on an episode of The Simpsons when he was the museum cur curator. When Lisa found out the truth about Jebediah Springfield, who was Hans Sprungfeld. And I, there's that line. He goes, if you'd like, I'm sorry, I have to go make some microwavable Johnny cakes. And he said that. And then when I met him, I was like, can you say microwavable Johnny cakes? And he goes, no, I don't think I will. And then he just left. And I went, okay, well, that was my big brush in with Donald Sutherland, which is cool. Um, so that was that. And then I didn't really get a lot of voice work after that. And, and I, I, I wanted to do more. Um, I did the thing with Super Science Friends. But again, that was just like something that sort of like fell out of the sky. Uh, and it, I did, an, like, a, they have a kid's show that they did called uh, Mr. Monkey Mechanic. Mm -hmm. And I did an episode of that. And the voice that I did for that was very similar to Ripper. And it was, hey, Mr. Monkey, dude. Like, that was the voice. And so I did Mr. Wolf in the Mr. Monkey Mechanic cartoon. And then that was like, it was the spring. It was the spring of 2021. It was the spring of 2021. Huh? And I got a message from Terry McGurin, who is the head writer producer like he's i don't remember all of the hats he wears with total drama island but he wears a bunch of hats uh yes. and he's now the voice of chris on the show and he messaged me and he asked if i wanted to audition for the show and that he if i had an agent and all that and so i set him up with my agent and then i auditioned and i actually auditioned for three different characters i auditioned um for one of the hockey guys uh and i also auditioned for uh was i did, did was it someone else or was it just the hockey guys and ripper i think it was just the hockey guys and ripper because i i being from the prairies i can do a pretty good hockey bro type voice you know um and so then the voice that he loved was ripper and the voice that I gave him is a voice that I do on the air all the time. Whenever I'm doing like a jerk voice, like that's the voice that I do all the time. So I did that in the audition. And I honestly, like people always talk about, they start with one voice and they end up with something that read mm -hmm. that I gave in my uh, very first pass of my audition is the voice of Ripper. That was the first one. Wow. So it wasn't anything crazy. Like I just did the voice. And then I auditioned, and I'm, I, this was the first, like, series series that I did, because the thing with Total Drama Island is, not Total Drama Island, with uh, Super Science Friends, they were all little short things. And they were all done, like, over a course of a long period. But this was a legitimate, not that Super Science Friends wasn't legitimate, just this was uh, every two weeks in the studio, here's your script, here's what you're doing. And you do, a, like, a few reads, and we did a read where I read my audition and then i had to read in front of the voice director and a few other producers um and casting agents and that was like done online so with this computer actually the one that i'm talking to you on i did the actual audition on this computer and then we did a read where the whole cast is together and so it was a big group read and there was like we that whole first episode we did the whole thing like live that's cool. With voices, with the director, casting people, producers, all watching. So we read the whole thing. So that was the actual cast of the show right there. And we did the whole read through. 
because I've never done this before. At the end, when we're done, everyone's asking questions. And I, I ask just like bluntly, so when are we going to know if we've got the job? Like, when do we know if we're on the show? And everyone looked at me like, well, this is the show. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right, all right. So this is the show then. Okay, all right, cool. So that's how this works. So, yeah, that's how it all happened. I did the voice with everybody, and then that's what became of the show. That's it. That's the whole story. Wow. That's a great cast, too. <clears throat> it is great. Okay. I, I come in, uh, and it's, 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 it's funny because, like, the guy who voices Z mm -hmm. looks like Z. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Immediately, I knew that was him. <clears throat> and, and then Tamika came in after me. And, yeah, that was, it was a really fun experience. The whole process was a really good time. And everybody's been super nice because I'm by far the least experienced person on the cast. Like, they're all great. They're all professionals. They've all done so much stuff. I'm the newest guy. Yeah. But, but the one thing, the, the, the only advantage I have is because I work the mic all day on my day job. So I know how to keep my levels, all that stuff consistent. I make it really easy on the producers so they don't have to do a lot of work cleaning up my levels and compressing my audio. Or anything. I'm super consistent. Right on the money. Yeah, because aren't you like <clears throat> with uh, Q107, I think? Yes. Yeah, 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 I work on Q107 in Toronto. We're a classic rock station. So, yep. yeah. My favorite music, so. Yeah. I'm a legend ripper. He's the worst guy. Like, that's the thing that I remember saying, like, after the read-through. Like, my audition, as I'm reading, I'm like, I am the worst character. Like, not like a bad character. But just as the characters, I'm the worst guy on the show. I'm just saying, making it clear, like, I'm very aware. Like, there's so many memes. And this is new to me because I've never done a show like this. But there's, like, there's fan art and there's memes and people write stuff. Everyone hates Ripper. That's the best part is I'm, like, the guy that everyone hates. But I'm, like, I'm like Bender, you know? Benders yeah. love it. People should love me. I'm, like, a, I'm a Bender, you know? Yeah. Terrible. I'm Gassy Bender think once the show gets going yeah because like the thing is like it's really only been on in italy and then it leaked and so yeah. now the cast because i talked about it i got a message saying come out 22nd there's big news you can talk about things so i dropped it online like i dropped it okay. i'm on 22nd we're going i'm ripper i'm super stoked because i was i was super stoked to yeah. talk about it you know yeah. And then, like, within an hour of me posting it, you can't say it's on the 22nd. There's something else coming. And I'm like, I, I, it's, what do I do now? It's out of the bag. So now we're just letting it ride. And, I, and I've been very apologetic with, with the powers that be, the people upstairs saying, like, listen, I didn't know. I changed things. It's all good. Getting people to talk about the characters. It's great. So, yeah. Now, did you record for the second season yet? Because I know you recorded for the first one. It's already There's, Yeah. Yeah. There's stuff coming. I can't say anything more about it. But, but there, there is another season. Yeah, we did two. So yeah, and you yeah, yeah. Recorded though. Is it's it recorded. It's recorded. Okay. I recorded it, and then I did re-recording, and then I did re-re-re-recording. So, so all my things are done. I'm good. Ripper so, is ripped. He's ripped out. He's yeah. good. Don't even worry. It's happened. That's. Awesome. See, I'm a, like I said, like when it, I saw it already, like I got leaked, but I'm still gonna watch it no matter what to help support you guys. I got I gotta, I gotta, I gotta feed some cats. I got cats I gotta feed. I gotta, you know, buy my bus ticket and my train ticket to get to work. I got things I gotta do, you know, yeah. so I appreciate that that you're, uh, you're gonna support it. <laughs> yeah. I if I'm being honest, I'll probably watch like five. Like, I'll, 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 be, I'll be watching, like, I've ever with the leaked, I've ever watched it twice. The whole good. Thing. Good, good, good. I like it. <laughs> I watched it with with my kids, and they they they're like, they they were shocked because like he's so farty, he farts all the time. Like that's the big thing about Ripper is he's always farting, and they think that that stuff's hilarious. They think that's the funniest thing ever. I mean, the fifth oh well, the fifth episode is basically designed for your character. If you know what I mean, you have... yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the beans one and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's good. The funny thing is, is like when I was reading the, I'd read the scripts. Mm -hmm. like everyone was got it everyone had the same thing you get the script and you flip to the last two pages see if you survived you know see if you made it through 
Uh, and then, then you go back through and you read. And so like, I would really only give the script a full read through like one or two times. And then I'd focus really on what's going on in the scenes that I'm in and just following along with the voice direction and stuff like that. Cause we had, we had some phenomenal, phenomenal people working behind the scenes. And I say that cause like I'm new. So any help I can get is really appreciated. And I was really grateful for the level of professionalism that went into that show. It was awesome stuff. It was a great thing to be a part of, you know? I'm really, uh, see, I'm really close with Terry. No, Terry. And then Lori Elliott. Do you remember her? She was also another writer on the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm really close Terry, with this. Terry's awesome. He, he's, he's fantastic. And he's just a great, he's a great voice actor, too. Like, he's absolutely yeah. fantastic. Uh, and a lot of times when we were doing, like, like the retakes, a lot of times his he gives them the read, so then he gives you the pace. So then you know mm-hmm. how to like fit things in the specific amount of time that they give. So that was I really liked it. It was good. That's awesome. See, I see I tell him like in my messages with him, like he did in my opinion, yeah, I think he did a great job of replacing Christian as Chris. I think he did yeah. a good job, like honestly. Well, he was his read is so good. Yeah. And just his his delivery and the way he times mm-hmm. and he puts emphasis on the right syllables. And then he sells you on it. And it's like, he's great. Like, I am, I am very, I'm one of those guys when I'm in the room with the cast, I don't talk. I just keep my mouth shut and I listen. I listen to everything, which is weird because my character is the exact opposite of that. He's so loud and he's such a jerk. But when I'm there and I'm in the room, I'm not really talking much. I'm just, my mouth is shut. I'm just listening to everybody talk. You know, they're, they're, they're the pros. I'm, I'm soaking it in, you know? I'm soaking in their wisdom because they're the ones that got it, not me. Wow, that's awesome. Now, can you please do like a whipper quote or a whipper, like some of your... I like okay. the steamboat. I hear it's a steamboat. All right. Oh. There's only two things that make a man look weak. Caring for other people and ordering mild chicken wings. I always order my wings bum inferno hot. <laughs> I can never finish them. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. That was so cool. Oh, sorry. See, I really like the steamboat thing. Like, I can't do it good because you're doing one steamboat, two steamboats. We did the steamboat thing like so many times. I think the count for steamboats goes to like ten or twenty, like straight. And then we redid it and we cut it in with different things because I we didn't know how it was going to work at the time we were recording it. I was just record giving them more than what they needed. But yeah, yeah, yeah. The steamboat things was like one steamboat, and then we like one steamboat, two steamboats, a new world record. Yeah, but it's easier to do when I'm standing. That is, I'm sorry, like I like I get so happy. Like when I hear the voices, <laughs> it's like it's oh funny my. that you're getting happy hearing like the worst guy. <laughs> He's such it's, a jerk. That's awesome. But I will say, I will say that in the second season. Okay. You see a very different side of Ripper. Ooh. Okay. Mm-hmm. See, I could see him. I don't know why. I sh- I see him dating Axel. 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 You know Axel? I do know how Axel. Because everyone keeps forwarding the video of her kicking me off the boat. Say, do it twice. He's the worst. <laughs> Kick him again. Yeah. No, but I could see like they have like that you know like like it was almost like the brick and Joe thing like I don't know if you remember those characters and it's almost yeah like type of dynamic. Yeah. So you you'll have to keep watching. Hell yeah! I really don't know everything that happens with the plot line. I know, I know how it ends, but I'm not talking about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the funny no, thing is, I don't really know how things end in the first season though, because I'm I'm I've only watched the pilot. And my kids watch the rest, but I want to watch, watch it when it comes out, so that I can do stuff on social media to help promote the show when it comes out. But I don't want to ruin it for myself. And the thing is, is like when you'd mentioned the Fred at Night thing on Teletoon, mm-hmm. I never watched myself on Teletoon at night. I couldn't, I couldn't take it. It's weird. It's very weird. Well, I, I know. I I've seen a lot it. of actors do that. Like a lot of actors don't watch themselves. Like I'll watch like I'll watch this because I want to do more voice work and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it's funny like this doing this show has gotten me a few other auditions for other shows. One of which I really I don't know if I don't think I got, but I really oh. hope I do. 
Yeah, but, you gotta get it. Come on. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of stuff that I really want to get. I'd love to do voice work for like uh, Ubisoft and be in an Assassin's Creed game. But the frustrating thing is, you get all like these auditions, and every time I get a video game audition, it's always like, "He's a grizzled fifty-six-year-old mercenary. He's been there and he's seen it all." And it's like that is not me. That is not my voice. No one listens to this voice and thinks grizzled mercenary. Because if I did it, the voice I would do is like, oh, I've been around the world, seen things. And no one would think it's funny. It'd be like when Pete Holmes does his Batman voice, you know? But like, you love Pete Holmes? That's my buddy. What? That's one of my buddies, believe it or not, Pete Holmes. Pete Holmes? No way! His Batman, like, if I was to do, like, a like a grizzled mercenary voice, I would be sound like Pete Holmes doing Pete Holmes as Batman. You're not even going to believe it. I'm Batman, like, which I think is hilarious, but nobody wants that voice in a video game. Like, otherwise, like, there's only one time that I've done a voice in a video game audition where it's like, yeah, I made it be have a chance, and I and it was for Ubisoft, and it, I think it was for Splinter Cell, and I did not get it. I didn't get it, which is upsetting because I really wanted to. See, oh, he's such a good guy. I'm a huge Pete Holmes fan, man. He's awesome. <laughs> I'll tell him you say hello if you want me to tell him. Chris. Yeah, tell him, tell him that when I was doing my morning show, we our biggest influence was his his late night show. And then we had a boss come in who did not think that was funny. And then he made us change stuff. And then the show kind of like imploded. But I will say that when we were following, not we weren't like ripping Pete Holmes off, but mm-hmm. his delivery, his style, his casual approach to content. When we were doing that, we were being very successful. And I am a huge, huge fan of Pete Holmes. I have nothing, nothing but positive things to say about that guy. I think that there's a lot of people um, out there that work in media or they work in comedy or they work as performers in general, and they don't quite fit into the appropriate mold. Mm. And it's difficult when you're in that position. You, you don't fit into all, you don't check all the boxes. And Pete Holmes is one of those guys that also doesn't check all the boxes, but he made it, you know? Mm-hmm. And he made it, and he didn't just make it. He made it with really good stuff. Yeah. Like, his content was really good, and he was really funny and really natural. And so many of us, like, idolize Pete Holmes. Like, he's got a... He, he's like a Seth Myers, like Seth Myers and Pete Holmes are like very similar types of guys. And I, I, if I met somebody that I would like really be super stoked to just sit down and talk with, it would be Pete Holmes. Uh, and Joel McHale was an, is another one like that. Uh, I met Joel McHale and I kind of like, I kind of whiffed when I met him. Like I didn't do it. I, I came off like he was obviously there to sell stuff. And and uh, I met him because our TV show that we did, Fred at Night, was really built around Talk Soup, mm. uh, or as it was called, The Soup. Um, and so when I met him, I was like, hey, man, just so you know, like when I was doing TV, our show was really based on Talk Soup. He goes, well, it was called The Soup, but I appreciate that and kept going. And in my head, I'm like, I think he thinks that I'm trying to shine him on and kiss his ass. But I wasn't. I was being honest. But I would I would imagine that there's a lot of times when you're a Joel McHale or you're a Pete Holmes. There's a lot of people that are sending a lot of like, I'm your I'm your biggest fan, and it's like, are you? Are you really? Are you just trying to get something out of me? You know? Eh. Well, that, that that's just the way it is. And you said Assassin's Creed. If you want me to, I could put you in contact with. Him. If you want the guy that plays Ezio, Roger Craig Smith, he's another one of my good friends. If you want me to put you in contact, help hey, you out. Put <laughs> me in touch. Put me in touch, man. I, I like a message a lot with Elias Tufexis as well, who's done like so many video game voices like uh, Deus Ex. And of course he was Leonidas in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And, mm-hmm. But he's got like, when I talk about like those grizzled assassin type, that's the type of voice that he has. <laughs> oh, Elias Tufexis. I sound like a real man. I'm a manly guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's on Star Trek now too. I love that guy. He's a really nice guy. And I'm not making fun of him at all, like, but there's so many of us that don't have those types of voices that kind of wish that we did, you know? Wow, that's that's dope. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> now, <clears throat> I think you kind of said it already. How did you like the audition process for Ripper? I think you kind of hinted at Terry. Yeah, I, I just it was, a, it was a long process of like a lot of read throughs. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I made a fool of myself at our first full cast reading. So yeah. 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 Now, in what ways, uh, there might be some ways, there might not be, I don't know. In what ways do you relate to Ripper? I think I relate to Ripper in that there's more going on than people realize. I think that there's there will be aspects of Ripper that will come through as the series develops. Um, but I do not relate to Ripper in that I hate fart jokes. <laughs> I do. I hate them. That's not to say that I don't think flatulence is funny. I do. But I hate fart jokes. And I think what it is is because working in radio, everybody thinks that radio jokes, radio people make like nonstop bad jokes all the time. And so fart jokes like, haha, fart sounds like that's such a classic cliche radio thing that I've always abhorred that kind of comedy. But in a cartoon, it's completely different. And I have no idea why in a cartoon I think it's acceptable. But in a cartoon, it's very acceptable, especially in a cartoon like this. And this type of character, it fits him. Like, he is just the worst guy. So it fits. I'm not like Ripper in a lot of ways like that. But I also, I also do order my wings super, super spicy. Mm. But I can handle it. I love spicy food. Like, I can take hot, hot food. I grow hot peppers every summer. I've got seedlings growing right now of like trinidad scorpions carolina reapers uh thai dragons i grow super super spicy peppers and i love love hot food so yeah i'm, I'm coming over. i'm sorry yeah for... do it up bum inferno hot buddy that's what we're serving at, at my house let me tell you wow that's a favorite total drama character other than ripper hmm. i love z i do love z um, just because he's so chill and he's so laid back. How can you dislike Z? He's like he's yeah, just such a great guy. Yeah, and yeah. the thing is, with all the other characters, there's like aggravating aspects to them. But mm -hmm. Z is just pure. There's just this pure, like chill vibe with that character. I absolutely love Z because he's the be I would argue that Z is the best guy on the show. Like he's the he's the he's the purest soul on the show, man. That's why I love Z. I find it funny, like he's like, yeah, man, like a, like almost like a stoner. Type. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, man. Why are you, why are you being so stressed out, man? I'm bet putting all my money on him. If he wins, I make twenty bucks. Like it's great. Yeah. yeah he who reminds me of like uh, you know the Cheech and Chong. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah absolutely. He, he's a great guy. I love, I love Z. He's super chill. He's just there to have a good time. Yeah, and he's another good friend too. Sorry, I keep yep. saying my friends. No, Tommy no, Chung. it's good. Tommy Chung. No, Tommy Chong. Oh, Tommy Chong. Tommy Chong from Edmonton. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He has had an incredibly storied, wild career, man. Like he yeah. has done some incredible things, like his his music career and how his music career led directly into his comedy career. He went to Bonnie Dune High School in Edmonton, which is right by the Rotary. I'm very familiar with Tommy Chong, man, because he's like one of those people. It's like Tommy Chong. Leslie Nielsen were oh. the most famous people to ever come from Edmonton when I was uh, like a kid. And now there's Nathan Fillion and Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox, but I didn't realize Michael J. Fox was from Edmonton when I was younger. Uh, so yeah, Michael J. Fox, Nathan Fillion, Leslie Nielsen, Tommy Chung. Yeah, those are the real famous people from Edmonton. Yeah. See, I, do you, if you know, do you know the inside joke between me and Terry? No. <laughs> Okay, so me and him have like a little inside joke because you know Michael J. Fox, right? Yes. I like to tease Terry. He looks like Michael J. Fox, like Marty. I've only met Terry. I've only met Terry two times. Well, he looks like Marty McFly. We okay. actually did a funny bit on my podcast with him, like Hip my interview. With him. What, what happened? Hip to be square. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was it was funny, like legit, like me and Terry, like legit. When during my interview, like he like took off his glasses and he was like, "Doc, I can't do it," but you know, it's so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I couldn't stop laughing. Diddly -dee. Diddly -dee. The twinkle. Love it. That's awesome. Now, if you were really on an island, what three famous people that are alive would you want on your island? Les Stroud. I don't know you know who Les Stroud is. He's That's the awesome. survivor man. So there's Man vs. Wild, right? Man vs. Wild with Bear Grylls. Okay. 
there's a show that was done here in Canada called Survivor Man. Survivor. And so strange. Survivor Man, like Bear Grylls' show is really fake. There's so much stuff if you go online, you can find like, we're out in the middle of nowhere and we're found hundreds of miles from civilization. And then it's like they'll, someone will go to the same spot and they'll turn the camera around. There's literally a highway there and a truck stop. Like it's his his show is so fake. It's so BS. Sur- Survivor <laughs> Man with Les Stroud is he's he is just um, out in the middle of nowhere on his own. There's mm. no crew. There's no camera crew. He sets up the shots and then he walks away. And he was always talking about how the longest thing about the show is he'd set up the shot, he'd walk away, and then he'd have to go back and get the camera and come back and get the camera again. So it's like that was the longest part of his thing. And he goes out and uh, he would do things where he's like, he goes, one of the most dangerous things that can happen is if you're canoeing in northern Ontario during the spring melt and your canoe tips. So let's tip the canoe. And then he flips the canoe over and it's just his show was his show was insane. Like in the way he would survive and he would catch animals and he would eat the animals he caught. Like it was just it was the real deal. And he taught survival classes as well. So. Les Stroud. There you go. That's my number one choice. Les Stroud. Number two choice. I don't know who the number two choices are. Uh, real? Can they be real people? Or do they have to be can, do they have to be real? Can they be fake? What kind of fake people are we talking about? <laughs> uh, like Ahsoka a- Tano. Star Wars. Okay, Star Wars. Yeah, has- Ahsoka Tano there using the Force, telling us introspective stories, keeping us brave, making sure we don't lose heart. That would be really helpful to do. Um, are you talking about the cartoon? Sorry to interrupt you. Cartoon, aka Ashley Eckstein's Ahsoka. Are you talking about the live action Rosario, Rosario Dar- Dawson? Which one? We'll say Rosario Dawson because then she's older and wiser. We'll say the older version. That's not to say it could be the Ashley Eckstein version from Rebels. Because, like, yeah. if you watch the trailer for Ahsoka Tano, they're basically doing live action shots of the very last episode of Rebels, anyways. So That's we true. could have, like, it's Rebel. We'll say. Final season Rebels Ahsoka. Ooh, okay. that's, that's what we want, okay? Okay. Uh, and uh, 1974 Dolly Parton. So she can sing songs and, you know, and just have, like, colloquial positivity. So there you go. <laughs> that's my crew right there. That's my nice. crew right there. Because she can play guitar and she can sing songs. It's great time. So there you go. I got Ahsoka Tano, uh, 1974 Dolly Parton. Les Stroud and me. We're going to survive. We're just going to have a great time. We're going to have music. We're going to have food. We're going to have the force. We're going we're gonna to walk out of there being better than when we went in. Like, life is good. That's sick. See, I'm a big Star Wars fan, too. So. Yeah, me too, man. I, I love Star Wars. I actually just watched last week's episode of Mandalorian because I had to catch up because I was behind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you excited for the new movies that are coming out? The three movies that they talk uh, about? I don't know. I'm never I'm never excited, but I'm never I this is the thing. I don't get excited, but I don't but I don't complain about them either. I just love Star Wars. I didn't complain about The Last Jedi. I didn't complain about uh Rise of Skywalker. I didn't complain about any of it. I never mm-hmm. complained. I loved solo. I loved I loved all kinds of stuff about The Last Jedi. There's all kinds of great ideas in there. Um for me, Star Wars is always great. It does, even when it's bad, it's still good. Like, I, there was, like, so much cheese that was in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. I still loved it. I did. I really enjoyed it. I don't get why everyone is always looking for reasons to be negative about everything all the time. It's like, just, why, why are you watching this to be upset? Yeah. Like, go something else. If you're so obsessed with being miserable, go be miserable with something. There's so many things we can be miserable about. Why are you being miserable with Star Wars? Yeah. It's space wizards, dude. It's space wizards. Relax. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Done. So, when the Obi Wan Kenobi series was coming out, it was the uh-huh. week of the finale. Okay. 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 They were coming into the building that I work in because I work at a radio station. There's also a TV station and there's TV studio and radio stations in the same building. And there's a green room where they send the the guests to come in and they can oh. hang out there. And there's like couches and refreshments and all that. I have a pass to get into the green rooms because I do stuff on the TV side as well. Okay. I was filling in on mornings. Okay. I was filling in on the morning show. And 
the thing is, is when you're doing mornings, you're you're up at like three thirty in the morning, and Holy. it's sort of like it kind of like affects your digestive system because you're drinking. I drink like a pot of coffee when I do the morning show, and so I saw on one TV channel that Hayden Christensen was doing was doing press for the show, mm-hmm. and I'm like, you know what? He might be coming into the building. That'd be pretty hilarious. That'd be pretty wild. And so then he's coming into the building, and I see him in the lobby. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. And I, I have a rumble in my tummy. I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I go to the I go to the green room because I those are the private bathrooms and it's easier and it's nicer nicer facility. Mm-hmm. So I go into the green room and there's two bathrooms in the green room and I go into the green room. And is it Deborah Chow the director? Yeah, it's Deborah. Yeah, yeah Deborah Chow. Yeah. So I go into the bathroom and I'm, we're, we're all grown ups here. We're all mature. It was not a good time. Oh no. It was, you... a, ri- it was a rough go in there. Okay. It was a rough go. I was fighting is for it, my life. Is this like a Ripper moment? Yes. Okay. Worse. Maybe Ooh. this is how I am related to Ripper. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Don't worry. Everything's in the toilet. Everything. There's no mess. It's just not a pleasant environment to be in. So then. I open the door of the bathroom because you're on a timer, right? So I've got my phone with my timer because I got to get back into the studio so I can get on air. Mm-hmm. And I open up the door of the bathroom. Who is about to walk into the bathroom? Hayden Christensen. Exactly. Oh, no. Wait. standing next to Deborah Chow. And so I, I have this moment and I look at both of them and I say, I go, don't go in there. And I close the door and I ran out. And then later on, one of my friends who's a floor director on the TV show that they were doing the interview with, mm-hmm. like, hey, man, they're just being super chill. They're talking to everybody. They're signing autographs. Do you want to get, go in and get something signed? I'm like, no, I don't think I do. <laughs> I don't think I will. That's just, you're never going to get that story from anyone else. I know. It's like so, it's like, what the hell? I have got a lot of moments of embarrassing myself in front of important people. It's like, oh, oh, what, oh my God. Forgive me. Uh, the Admiral Akbar quote. What's it called? It's a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> yeah. So that was a horribly embarrassing, humiliating experience, and they have no idea who I am. Unless we're just going to leave it at that, and it's fine. But I if remember you... the look on her face. I didn't even really look at him, but I remember the look on her face of like, "Who is this crazy person?" <laughs> And I was like, I was giving them a, like a friendly warning. I yeah. Was being, I was being a good person. I was helping them out. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're you being know. a cool you know? Yeah. I didn't want to go in there. Yeah. I didn't have any poopery or anything in there. That's what they should have had is a, a can of like Febreze or some poopery or something to put in to make it smell nicer. But no, it's terrible. I'm asking your permission. Do you want me to edit this part out for you, or do you want me to keep this in? No, you leave it all in. I wouldn't have told you if I wanted to edit. <laughs> okay, okay. Because I don't know if that was too personal for you. That's no. Okay. I have told this story. I told this story on because uh, I was doing a panel interview. I was interviewing Carl Weathers at the at the Fan Expo panel, and I was on stage in front of like two thousand people. And I was like, "Do you guys want to hear a crazy Star Wars story?" And they're like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Okay." Strap in, because here we go. And I've told the whole story to the crowd, and then Carl Weathers came out, and he was like, I want you to finish your story. I was really waiting for you to finish the story. This is really good. So, yeah, so Carl Weathers has heard that story, too. I told everybody. I don't care. They don't care. Nobody cares. It's all good. That was that was pretty cool. That was really cool. I, I thought... Like you know, like the how you get like toilet paper on your foot or like no, 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 no. I'm I'm always paying attention to that stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty pretty savvy. But no, no, no. The rest of it was the worst. <laughs> now, is there a certain type of role you love to portray? Like you said, Assassin's Creed was a game you want to do, like a certain type, like a western. I don't know. Oh, I would love to do westerns. I love westerns. I absolutely love westerns. I'd love to do some on camera stuff. Ooh, That'd okay. be pretty cool, but I've never done it. Uh, I've, I've done all kinds of like stage performances growing up, okay. but never really like professional, like on camera acting work. Um, but I would love to do some voice work for like, like a video game. Like I said, I would like to do, uh, I would love to do an Assassin's Creed game. 
Uh, and I would like to be like one of the characters that's like in the guild, but sort of like helps and makes super needed inventions, Ooh. gives them cool invention stuff. I don't know if that'll ever happen. We'll have to wait and see. Or just like a drunken near do well who like gives them dumb advice. That would be something else that I wouldn't mind doing. I just want to be in one of the games is really the gist yeah. of it. No, I feel like you... I'm a James Gunn type character. Like I could be in a James yeah. Gunn type character because he casts characters that are like me all the time. But everybody else seems to like shy away from that type of persona. But I could do that. That's what I could do. I have to wait and see. I need to get an audition with one of James Gunn's shows. Let's see if we can make that happen. Well, if I interview James Gunn, I'll put yeah, him. Yeah, you tell him. I'll tell him. You tell him the guy he he like he he befouled a bathroom before Deborah Chow and Hayden Christensen were gonna get in it. He's perfect. He'll love that story. He'll love that story. I think it'll be funny. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you still keep in touch with co-stars and directors you work with? And uh, th- I think maybe we would have kept in touch more if it was like the pre-COVID times. But because okay. of the situation that was going on with COVID, no one recorded together. Everyone was separately. And maybe mm-hmm. that's the way it normally goes down. Everyone is separate. I I've, I don't have enough experience. Um, the only person I really actively keep in touch with is terry actually and i think it's because terry kind of held my hand through the process because i'm new whereas Mm -hmm. a lot of the other cast members seemed to know each other Mm -hmm. and had done other stuff together like the studio we recorded at was also recording other shows like uh my little pony was being done in that same room and same place and so they were recording in another studio and we were recording over here but the waiting room and the lobby is the same and a lot of the cast people seem to all know each other I was very much on the outside of that. I didn't know anybody else. I didn't know any of the people that I was working with. But they seemed to know each other more than I did. But that's because they're more experienced. And that's, you work, you work around, you know other people, you meet other people. But I didn't know anybody. So, I don't know. Wow. Now, who's the coolest person that you have worked with? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. uh, Brent Jubinville, the guy who does Super Science Friends, is like the coolest dude. He is the raddest, coolest guy you will ever meet. Uh, he just, his story is so rad. Like he, he chased the dream, man. Uh, and I love people that chase the dream. He, he, he went to, he went to like LA, beat on doors, went to talk to people. Like, he paid his dues. He crawled his way to where he is. And I love stuff like that. Like, that's the type of thing that fills my heart with joy, you know? I love that stuff. So good. Wow, you didn't choose Terry. Terry's going to be like, oh, dear. Yeah, well, like, Terry's cool in a different way. But, like, if like, because I don't know as much about Terry as I do about Brett. So, Brett Jubinville, yeah, like, his story about like and he needed to borrow money to make a one time he needed to borrow money from this like swedish metal band who gave him money to make a phone call to get call his parents like it's his story is just it's incredible off off the rails yeah 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 yeah. he's got a wild story man wow now if you didn't go into voice acting or comic book writing it's like what do you think your career would have been what other interests and hobbies but if you know Sometimes, like, I wish that I had stuck with drawing when I was growing up and wondering where things could be with that otherwise. Um, but if I wasn't doing, like, the VO radio stuff, what would I be doing? I don't know. I used to do roofing. When I dropped out of high school, I worked in a restaurant, and then I did roofing. And that was, like, I honestly found it really relaxing. So I, I didn't mind roofing at all. I was, yeah, roofing's all right. Uh, I, I don't know. It's hard to think about what else I would do. Because, like, the, I, I, I was weird. I knew that I wanted to be on the radio, like, like, my whole life. Like, I don't know if you watched Howard Stern's Private Parts, but when you talked about it, I want to be on the radio. It's like, that's, that was the same way for me. I remember, I remember when I decided I was going to be on the radio. Uh, it was January of 1997. That's exactly where I was when I decided, determined that this is what I was going to do for a career. Um, I recalled the radio station that I listened to in high school called The Bear. 100.3 The Bear in Edmonton. 
And the evening's announcer was Goldie Rocks, was her name. Her name was Goldie Rocks. And I called and I requested Tool Stinkfist. And she made fun of me on the phone for like four minutes and then said, yeah, the Simpsons is back from commercial break. I got to go. And she hung up the phone. And I was like, man, that's the coolest job ever. (laughs) So then I decided I was going to be on the radio. And then, yeah, I went back to school and I got my high school diploma and then I got into radio. That's that was it. And my first radio job, my first paid radio job was overnights on an AM country station. And it was, yeah, and so I played country music. And we, it, was, it was like, it was super old station and super old like rotary pot boards. And the, we would play music. Some of the music was on 45s. So you had to play music on 45s, carts, and CDs. Yeah, mm-hmm. did it all. So you'd be mixing from like carts, which are like eight tracks. They look like eight tracks and they've got like a tone. And so the eight, the cart will play and it's like a loop, right? So it'll play and then a tone will hit and it'll fire off the next one. Mm. So like that's, that was when I started in radio, there were still lots of stuff that was on analog, like on tape, like the commercials were all on carts. So the commercials were on carts. So you would have you now carts like about that big right okay so you would have stacks of carts and you would organize the carts based on the commercial island so and then some commercials would play every island so you'd have to like organize your carts so you'd look on the list and be like boop 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 and then you would have the carts going like do 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 so you could put them in the machine and then when they play pull it out put the next one in Pull it out, put the next one in. Pull it out, put the next one in. And then when the commercial line was done, you would put them all back, and then you would stack your carts for the next commercial break, and you'd make sure they were all in a row. You'd always try and keep three ready to go. So, And then you would also pick your music. You At the top of each other, you'd go through with your music log, and you'd go to the CD wall, and you'd look along, you'd find the CD, put it out, CD, pull it out, CD, pull it out. And then you would have the CDs stacked over there. This is the way it used to be. Now it's all on a computer screen, but it used to be you actually had to have the CDs and the carts and the records, everything ready to go. And I, when I came into radio in the late 90s, like a lot of stations still weren't even fully digital and they still played music on CDs and they still played the commercials on the carts. And that was my first three jobs were like that. My first three jobs were like that. I didn't go to a station that was pure digital until 2001. While the year and, that's when, and that's when I was working in Winnipeg at Power 97. Yeah. Now you know. You know it all. Well, 97, though. Like you, you look like you're 30, Fred. No. No, it's just good lighting. No, no. I'm 44, man. What? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, man. So, yeah, like that was when I started. It was like that. And I always wanted to do cartoons and animation and stuff. But the problem was is that in Canada, like almost everything, everything is done in Toronto. So until you get to Toronto, it's really, really hard to get like steady voice work, especially in animation, because everything in Canada is pretty much done in Vancouver and Toronto. And Toronto's where almost all the animation happens. So being in Toronto has like been a huge boon to me. Um, even though it's really been only like the past like two or three years that I've really like push, push, push for more voice work. When I, I like to wish my guests happy birthdays. When's your birthday? I'm curious. Though. In May, end of May, May 24th. Okay, once May 24th, I'm wishing you happy birthday. You got it. I appreciate. It. When's your birthday? The day after Christmas, December 26th, Boxing oh, Day. Boxing right. Day. Look at you. Okay, well, next Boxing Day, I know who I'm wishing a happy birthday to. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, favorite band or artist and type of music? Ooh, uh, the music man. So you see. You know, it's funny because. Rage Against the Machine is the band that I would always argue that I love the most because so much of the music that I listen to that I love, I only love or listen to because of them. But in terms of like listening to now, I don't really listen to Rage Against the Machine very often anymore. Okay. Um, and it's and it's not because I don't think that they're good. It's just I seldom listen to them because I I'm not like there's 
there is a lot of profanity and there's a lot of complex themes that are in that song that is very difficult to break down and explain to a nine-year-old. They'll just think, oh, they're swearing, that's cool. So I'm not going to do that with them until they can understand the concepts and the principles and the issues that they're confronting in their music. But I do still listen to Tool, which is interesting because I wouldn't be in radio if it wasn't for Tool. I still think Tool is like, they were always like my number two, but they sort of like eked up into my number one. Uh, the Deftones are also right near the top for me. I love the Deftones. But it was just last week, like I got re like not last week, but like a few months ago, I started getting really into Led Zeppelin again. Ooh, uh, and I absolutely adore Led Zeppelin so much. Um, I think that they are just masterful. I love Led Zeppelin just so, so much. Um, yeah, I really think like Tool is still like my favorite band that's still recording though. But it's interesting when I'm listening to music for the most part, I'm listening to like scores and video game soundtracks mm -hmm. more than anything else. Cause that's what I'm always listening to when I'm writing It's like, cause I can't have music with lyrics. Mm -hmm. so if there's music with lyrics, then I'll just write down the lyrics. I can't focus. That's my problem. Oh, see my fair band is queen. The oh, champion. they're so great. That is an excellent choice. That's fine. Yeah, like, it's like can't stop me now, right? Yeah, don't stop me now. It yeah, don't stop me now or can't stop me. Like whatever it is, it's a great song. And the thing is, is that I always used to think that song was like super cheesy, and I still think it is kind of a cheesy song. But man, do I love it! Just a banger. Yeah. Not, like Queen is such a great band. Yeah. It's like I had a discussion with my wife like a few months ago where she didn't realize that Fat Bottom Girls was also Queen. Yeah, like, like they, they could hit. do it all. Like they're like yeah. they're like Led Zeppelin in that way that they can do like all kinds of different sounds. They're that talented of a band, you know. And have a cigar, like ah, oh. like there's like a version of Have a Cigar from the Foo Fighters, but Brian May is playing guitar in it. Mm -hmm. And Brian May often gets accused of not being able to lay down a thrashing song, but Sweet Jeebus, the way he rips out. If you find it's at, interestingly enough, it's on the Mission Impossible 2 soundtrack. Okay. The Foo Fighters with Brian May covering Pink Floyd's Have a Cigar. And it is insanity. It is such Crazy. a good song. Put that on your list. Have a Cigar. Favorite sports and favorite. I love rugby. It's my absolute favorite sport. I played, I was a flanker and I played scrum half as well. I was also a winger. I love rugby. I think it's the best. I cannot play it anymore because my body is old and it's broken. My favorite sports teams, I've got multiple different teams. Favorite sports team for baseball, absolutely, 100%. The Toronto Blue Jays, can't give it up. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, for basketball, going to cheer for the Raptors, of course, because it's the hometown team. Uh, for hockey, that's an exception. Oilers, because that's my hometown. Always cheering for the Oilers. Absolutely love the Oilers. They're starting off the playoffs tonight, and they're going to go all the way. This is the year. This is the year, baby. We're bringing the cup back up north. That's what's going on. Uh, as for football, I cheer for the New York Giants. I also have a real big soft spot for the Bills because they're so close. And the way their team completely imploded on defense this year was very upsetting to watch. Like injury after injury after injury, it was very upsetting because that team was so good. This was their year, and it just didn't happen. I was so upset. Um, but, yeah, that's it. There's a favorite sport, favorite sports teams. Now you got it. Well, please don't hate me. My favorite team's the Canucks. Dude, oh, don't worry about it. You can love the Canucks. That's great. I actually saw Henrik Sedin walking down the street in Toronto the other day. And I was like, I didn't want to say anything because I didn't know if it was Henrik Sedin or his brother. So you can't really say, what if you get the wrong Sedin? How am I yeah. going to know? They look the same. Ah, well. Now, uh, uh, <clears throat> fair food. Fair food. Uh, lasagna. Although, lately, um, doubles, which is like a Trinidad Caribbean dish, have been fastly rising up the charts. And jerk chicken, I'm a huge fan of. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so doubles and jerk chicken are really like catching up because I've got a newly really great jerk chicken recipe. Like that. Now, what is your advice for younger people? I'm coming a voice actor and comic book writer. What's your advice? Uh, for writing, I would say there are, hold on one second. I'm going to grab three books and I'm going to show you exactly what I would tell people. What you got? Where they are. 
<laughs> they're, they're normally on that bookshelf. Um, there's three books. Uh, the uh, it's like forty master care like forty master characters and how to write them. Uh, twenty five master plots and how to use them. And the writer's guide to characterization. I was just say if you want, you could s- take a picture of it, send it to me. I could at least insert like a little. Picture. Yeah, like I'll send you a URL so that you can find them. They're normally on the bookshelf right there in my office, but they're not there right now. Uh, but those three books, if you want to like practice writing, I think are absolutely indispensable. Um, there's also The Hero of a Thousand Faces, which is, of course, the book that George Lucas always really recommends. And that one's really good. Like, that's just a really good, fascinating read about about how story is ingrained into human DNA. Like with the concept of telling stories and storytelling. And I think that's a really great way. And if you read that book, there's a lot of like psychoanalysis that goes into it about the psychological impact of stories and why we like the stories that we like. Uh, As for voice acting, though, I really don't have uh, all that much advice. My best suggestion would be to get an agent, but not an agent that charges you, an agent that takes a share of the money you make. Because if you're paying them, they're not going to fight for you to get as much work. You know, mm. if they're getting a share of your work, they're going to force push you to get more work because then they get more money. So those those are my that's the best advice that I have that way. Like get an agent that you don't pay that just takes a share of your money. I like that. Now, before I ask my last question, do you have any questions? No, I'm just like stoked that you're like a fan of the show and had me on here. I think that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm just riding the wave, man. Thank you. Would you be willing to come back on for a part two? Answer some fans I- any questions. Okay, let's come back on when the second season is out, and then I can do that for sure. Okay. And now, uh, is there anything you like to promote and shout out? A couple uh, of Mud 79 Season 2 is going to be dropping a trailer on May the 4th. And then, right. from my understanding, uh, we're going to be dropping, we're going to start, re- we're going to relaunch the show on June 7th. I think mm-hmm. is when all that is going to happen, because we were just talking with the final dates uh, yesterday. So that should be going on soon. Thank, Fred, thank you so much for being awesome. Amazing guest. I had a fun time shout out to you. Thank you, Fred. Thank you for letting me be on here and humiliating myself again, talking about Hayden Christensen and Deborah Chow. <laughs> have, a great, have a great day, everybody, and stay awesome. And you stay awesome, Fred. You stay awesome, man. Thank you. And may the force be with you, Fred. May the, yeah, and also with you. <laughs>